Hello. Let's go ahead and get started on the next topic here in chapter 15, and that's on thiols. So first of all, we need to answer the question that, you know, what is a thiol? And so, in, in relationship to what it is with respect to oxygen. So let me make this much smaller. There we go. This is a thiol. A thiol has some type of carbon-containing group, followed by an SH. Okay, and so now you need to think about where, with respect to oxygen on the periodic table, is sulfur. Because we're going to see that they have very similar chemistries with to each other, but sulfur is uh, special and unique. And, and can do certain things that oxygen cannot, and likewise, oxygen can do some things that sulfur cannot. So, so now if we look at the periodic table, we can see where oxygen is. It's a chalcogen, and sulfur is right below it on the periodic table. Okay, so since they're in the same family, they're going to have similar uh, properties with respect to each other. For example, they both have two sets of lone pair electrons. However, sulfur, since it's still on the periodic table, is both a better nucleophile and a better electrophile than oxygen. First up, let's learn how to name it. So the IUPAC nomenclature. If the thiol is the primary substituent hanging off, then it's, then you name the alkane just like you would, or the alkyl group just like you would, and you give the ending thiol. However, if the thiol is a substituent hanging off of something that has higher priority, for example, there's an oxygen also, it's given the prefix mercapto. An old and of course you have to give the locants. The old term for a lot of the thiols were called mercaptans, and there's also an older term, especially in biochemistry and biology, that they like to use for a the thiol functional group, and they called it a sulfhydryl. Sulfhydryl. However, we're going to stick to thiol being the ending here in this class, or if it doesn't have the top priority, we'll use the term capto. So let's just look at a specific example. Okay, here we look for the longest carbon-containing chain, and that's three, so it would be, become a propane. And then you just give it the thiol ending. So this is propane, thiol, and of course we need to give it a locant. So it's one propane thiol. Okay. Let's do another example, right? at least a couple of examples. Okay. So here we look for the longest continual carbon chain that has the sulfur in it. So it's one. Two, three, four, five, six. So that's going to be a hexane. The sulfur has a higher priority than the methyl group, so this becomes hexane thiol for the ending. We have to give it the locant. The lowest locant would be three. And then we have to name the other functional group, which is the methyl. And the methyl group is hanging off of carbon number 4. So it's 4-methyl-3-hexane-thiol. Okay. What if we have something that looks like this? 1, 2, 3, 4. There are two of them. Just like what we've seen with alcohols, or methyls, or any other functional groups, we have to give it the di prefix. So this would become butane. There's still four carbons. Di thiol. And of course we have to give it the locants. One, four, butane di thiol.
I'll give you a moment to name this one. So first, let's check to see how many Diff, uh, different functional groups we're going to have. We're going to have this as a functional group and this is a functional group. Okay. And which one gets top priority? The top priority is going to be the alcohol. Now let's see how many carbons. We have one, two, three, four, five carbons. So the root is going to be pentane. Of course, we drop that terminal E and add the OL ending. So what the alcohol gets priority, so it's hanging off of carbon number two. And then finally we have the thiol group. But here it's called mercapto. And we give it its slow can. It's hanging off of carbon number five. Finally, finally, I wanted to end with a couple of important um, thiols that are used in biochemistry and biology labs. This is, uh, well, here in this first example, the one on the left, we have something that's commonly called BME for beta mercaptoethanol. We would also, in this class, call it 2 mercaptoethanol. And this is an important reducing reagent that's used for protein, synth uh, protein expressions and also just for uh, uh, the feasibility of storing proteins. And it's called beta because if you think about the alcohol being at ground zero, we'd have an alpha-beta atom, so the mercapto group is hanging off of that beta carbon. Okay. And then we have DTT, dithiothreatol, which if we were going to name this according to IUPAC standards, we would have named the 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's butane, diol, hanging off of carbons 2 and 3. And then we would have dithio. Well, I'm sorry. Whoops. Dimercapto. One, four. So one, four, dimercapto, two, three, butane diol, more commonly called dithio three atol or DTT. And it too is a reducing reagent that's used in biochemistry and molecular biology labs. We'll talk about the kind of reactions and the chemistry that thiols can do um, in a future future lecture. Thank you. I hope this helps.